the Abscondo Podcast. Hi, welcome to the Abscondo Podcast. I want to start this episode by by reading a part of a poem that was written uh, in, the, in the 14th century by a poet named Hafiz. Now when I awake, all the internal instruments play the same music. God, what love mischief can we do for the world today? Wow, I <laughs> this blew me away because that's really the state that 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 you know I've been trying to get myself into um, for some time now to be able to wake up in the morning with all the internal instruments playing the same music, which means, of course, that everything about me, everything within me, um, is is moving in the same direction. And that direction is, of course, love. But I, I love how he says love mischief. And this is, of course, a, a recent translation. Um, this was written, I think, in Arabic, um, as I said, like 14th century, somewhere in the Middle East. Uh, Hafiz was a Sufi poet. And I don't know a whole lot about the Sufi movement, but I think I'll be finding out more about that. I know Rumi's associated with that as well. And a friend of mine gave me this this book of Hafiz poetry yesterday, and so far I'm just totally blown away. And I don't normally get into poetry at all, but this is really beautiful and powerful spiritual writing. So back to that piece, and of course this is part of a longer a longer poem. But you know what love mischief can we do? And he capitalizes we as well as God. And Hafiz uses many different words. To refer to God, this poem he actually just calls it God. But you know, I've said many times in different in my writing and podcasts that that the word God could also be called love. The word God could also be called consciousness. So there are many different words for what some people call God. It could be called the nothingness or the void. Um, anyway, <laughs> back to the poem. Um, what so and he capitalizes we meaning that. Of course, that we are an extension of God. God, what love mischief can we do for the world today? What a beautiful way to wake up. If that were the way we wake up every single morning, I think that's kind of what it's all about. To be living in a way that you that all your instruments play the same music. So your mind, body, spirit, your entire life, your profession. Um, you know, everything about your life is, is headed in the same direction. And of course that direction is love. Now by love mischief, I love that because that, that's a great word for what I think I do kind of unleashing these, these kind of funny games through different, through different channels and different ways, um, into the world. And it's really all about playing, but if it's done with love, then it's, then it's a, it's a divine thing to be doing because people need more love inspiration. The world needs to be inspired by the light or the music of love. So it doesn't really matter what, what form it takes. Every relationship you have with your parents, with your spouse, with your children, with your friends, with the community, to be one person, all your internal instruments playing the same music. And... I don't know. I've I've been going through some things, well, for a long time, trying to get to that place where everything is consistent. Because the problem I think we face, and we try to get to a better place, whether you call it spirituality or whether you just call it, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, trying to get to that good place of success or fulfillment. And what ends up happening too often, I think, is we is we feel the need to segment ourselves. So here's my personality and my persona and and the person I am for work. Here's my persona in my relationship. Here's my persona as a parent or child. And we have all these roles. And I've suspected for a long time, just from personal experience, that the more I try to play these roles, the weaker I get. I'm segmented. The, The power of what I'm doing goes nowhere. And so 
the point is, you know, even I've, I mean, even I, I have felt the need for a long, long time, even though I moved to Europe, I'm an ex- American expat living in Slovakia, and and, that, and I thought that would give me some space from kind of the, the structures, the roles, which it has, but, but even so, I have been juggling these different roles, and, and especially when I was, you know, living with my with my wife, um, you know, to play the the role that she needed as a husband, which wasn't natural for me. I couldn't really express myself freely or or, or be free, and that relationship ultimately ended. Now I'm in a relationship where I can be myself, where I am free, and it's it's a wonderful relationship. We have a newborn baby together, and we've been together for several years, and and there's absolutely no chance that anything will change that at least by our choice, and because it's a wonderful thing to be able to be yourself, to be one person, to, to be able to unleash my love mischief onto the world, to not be restricted. And, wow, I mean, to be able to, to, to do mischief freely across all areas of life. And, and it's not easy to get to that place, but, but that's, the, that's the destination we're trying to go to. The people we admire are the ones who are basically playing. They're doing their love mischief. Um, the celebrities, the Oprahs of the world, the Tony Robbins, I don't know, I don't know why those two names come to mind, but, but they do for me just at this moment because those, those are people who are consistent. They're not going to be, it's not going to be a different Oprah um, when you're in private or a different Oprah when she's trying to make money and different Oprah when she's, she's doing you know, a conversation with a cartole. She's the same person and she's unleashing love mischief if you or whatever you want to call it onto the world which is her light her music and i firmly believe and know that that's the highest state of being that's fulfillment that's our destination that is total success if we can find a way so that all our instruments are playing the same music that we wake up every morning ready for this love mischief because the world needs it, and we're going to play all day, and we're going to unleash it and try different things, and, and if that doesn't work, try something different. But be honest all the time. Honesty is so badly lacking in this world. And the reason for that is because we don't have acceptance. Because it's it's a balance. If you don't have acceptance, and, and you're going to be honest, what you're going to do is be punished by people. And that's what happens. And that's why relationships sour, because we don't accept each other. And the world doesn't, acceptance isn't the normal state of existence and 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 also you know so honesty isn't either because we try to hide from people who are judging that's the fundamental problem so there's one secret though and you might think well yeah what do you do that's impossible well the secret is love because when you're loving nobody can attack or judge love I will say that again. When you are being loved, when you are acting out of love, when you are loving, it's impossible for the ego to judge, condemn, shame, blame, fight. I mean, people are going to try, but not because of what you just said or did. It's remarkable. I've taken so many risks in the past, and I'm only telling this about myself because it's my, it's my experience. I'm not trying to say that, look at me. That, that's not all what this is ever going to be about. I don't care. But what I'm saying is, for my own sanity, what I've, what I've done is taken this path where I've, I've known all along that I need to be this one person, this loving person, and, and free to do this mischief. And so I've slowly very slowly, and I wish I had gone faster, but it was a very slow process for me that probably started since the day I was born, and very slowly, I've gone more toward being honest about who I really am, how I really feel, how I really see things. In all those years when I was expressing that truth without any love in my heart, I was being, I was constantly beaten up. You constantly get engaged in judgments, and you get into these debates and arguments and become bitter and you attack people trying to prove your point. So you go about it the wrong way. You go about truth the wrong way. And when that happens, you do get attacked, you do find you do face opposition. But when you learn to love yourself, when you find out that all the love you need comes from within, 
You don't need it from someone else. You don't need someone else's approval. You just need to find a way to love yourself and let that love flow into you all throughout your body and mind and then extend from you to everyone else. And then you find out what love is. And we're not educated on what that is, which is why I do all this writing every day because I'm trying to educate um, those who I'm in contact with and, and the world. This is my love mischief. Trying to educate what love even is. People don't really know because the word has been misused and abused just like the word God. So when when you are truly understanding your mind, your, your thought system in your mind is based on love, and and you do your best. You're never perfect, but you do pretty damn well to to respond to challenges and to people and to situations with a loving response, which is always accepting, which is always serving and understanding and trying to clarify and trying to deal with people on the level of needs. Which what I found is I've gotten away with a lot of mischief. <laughs> I mean a lot of mischief. And when I say gotten away with, what I mean is that there's no opposition. You don't have debate. You don't have attack. Come on, people, attack. Just please go to Ipscondo.com or or find me on Instagram or whatever and just attack. Tear apart these things because it hasn't happened, which is so strange. Because all those years before before I committed to being loving, before I committed to love, to be love, and I wrote that book called Be Love, How to End Pain by Escaping the Ego, and I don't, you know, since I've written that book and put that out there and been honest about this, I've not been attacked, even by customers, and I have a lot of customers, and with mixed results sometimes, you know, and so have faith in love. That's the point. Have faith in love. Learn what love is. Perfect love. The kind of love they talk about, um, that Jesus talked about. The kind of love, that if you want to read A Course in Miracles, that kind of love. There are certain you know, characteristics to what love is and what love does. And when we align to that, it's a decision in the mind, but it has to flow from a feeling in the heart. It's an open heart, open mind. And belief in union, togetherness, that when someone comes into your life, you say yes, you don't re- resist, you don't see any value in separation and the values of separation, which are ego. So you you basically escape the ego, and then you just express your love mischief, and you do it relentlessly through any form you can think of. And eventually what happens is maybe you already know what your life purpose is, what you are on this planet to do. I did, I have for a while, but I never could, I never really could execute it perfectly. Or maybe you don't know what yours is. But whatever it is, when you combine it with love, now you got something. Okay? So for me, I've known for many, many years that I'm a connector, that my mission in life is to connect people for business relationships that, that create value, for personal relationships that create value happiness and fulfillment and value. And of course, if you look at that further, it's not just about the mechanics of connecting people because there's this thing called ego in the world, which is dominant. And ego does not want to connect people. Ego wants to resist, go off into separation, fight any form of union. So when I say I'm a connector and and the value that I create in this life has to do with how many and how um, how valuable how many relationships I create with, you know, in some way, and how valuable those relationships are. What I soon realized with my study of ego and spirituality is that it's impossible for people to really connect in that way without cracking the code on ego, without getting past that ego block, because the ego is a closed heart, closed mind. And so that's why I do all this writing and music and movie and well the movie it's more like a a youtube video but anyway you can check it out it's called treetops 2018 and if your ego is intact you're probably going to hate it but if but if you can get past that and let your ego quiet and just listen and watch calmly um you might get some value out of it what was i saying uh anyway if we can if we can get to the place where we combine that mission in life if you know what it is, 
and then you do it in a loving way, now you can do it. You see, if you want to be a musician, I, I don't think you're going to be very successful without, without um, being able to channel consciousness, without being able to, to touch that realm. And when I say touch, it's not really, you can't really touch it, but metaphorically to channel that realm of God. And a lot of the, the famous musicians and famous songs, you know, there, there is a spiritual element running through it. And that's what timeless, amazing, immortal art is all about. Now, try to be a musician purely with your ego and ambition, and you might get up on stage, and you might have a few people following you. You might even have a hit. But long term, it's just not going to be sustained. For whatever reason, when something is infused with spirit and love, it has a timeless quality to it, and it's perceived as being beautiful, but you have to get past people's ego to be able to perceive that. Because the ego can never perceive or feel anything. The ego is always thinking. It's always trying to look for some kind of salvation in the future. It's always worried about the past, but mainly about the future. And so the present moment, a beautiful song or painting or, or book or whatever, a poem, is not going to be perceived by someone who's dominated by the ego, which is why you have to meditate, which is why you have to study what love is, which is why you know we, we do these teachings, maybe follow Eckhart Tolle or some other spiritual teacher to be able to open the mind, create cracks in the ego so that consciousness, beauty, truth can come through. And that's called vision. Perception is the mind. That's the judgment. Vision is love. Because the only truth is love. So now here I am, and I think maybe for the first time in my life, and I'm very happy this week. I can't, I can't tell you how happy. It's not, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really believe in ups and downs, but this is more of a, a gradual awakening that for the first time in my life, I can be one me. Now when I wake, all the internal instruments play the same music. God, what love mischief can we do for the world today? I don't want to bore you with how that is or why that is or exactly how I, what kind of hacks I did to get there. But I do want to say that that's the destination. And I want to, I believe it's possible to, for everyone to get there and to stay there. And that's awakening. Awakening is waking up with that feeling that I can't wait to play today in love. I guess I'll leave this podcast with that. Thank you so much for listening to the Abscondo Podcast.
life The sun is lighting up those dreams The world still sleeps so I'm still free So I keep very quiet And if I should fade off to sleep Day will start with or without me But I'll do what's required But if in these routines I might be People who are just like me Hope you'll stay by my side